Alright, so I'm gonna finish up with my take on the MTC Optics Viper Connect. Uh, first, I have to apologize a little bit. So for every video clip I'm doing right now, I keep on changing cameras, microphones, lighting, time of day, all that sort of jazz. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find a uh, reasonable setup where I don't have to mess with it very much. With that... Um, that allows me to fairly quickly make these um, uh, short video clips with adequate sound quality, right? So it will vary from day to day to camera to camera and all that. Ultimately, I think sound is probably more important since uh, I'm sure you're all struggling sufficiently with my accent uh, for the uh, sound to exacerbate it. But anyhow, so. I'm giving another recorder a shot. I've had this one for a while. It's supposed to have decent microphones. Anyhow, uh, so I talked about the MTC Optics Viper Connect, uh, this guy, earlier. At the time it was uh, mounted on my uh, Air Force Talon SS 25 caliber uh, PCP air gun. And uh, right after uh, recording that video, I yanked the scope off and mounted it on my Ruger uh, 1022 uh, takedown, the 22 long rifle uh, rim fire uh, firearm. And after that, I popped it on this guy. This is, I don't know, I don't think the whole thing fits in the field of view, but um, this is a CZ Slavia 17 uh, caliber uh, break barrel air gun. Um, the basic idea was that, right, so I tried the PCP, I tried it on the 22 long rifle, and this is a Springer, so different recoil all go in different direction. None of these are particularly hard in the scope, but, uh, you know, that's the best I could do. This scope has very short eye relief, which gives it a variety of advantages. I'll talk about that a little more uh, shortly, but it also has a disadvantage. It, I can't really test it in a high recoiling firearm, and pro it's probably not designed with those in mind uh, um, anyway. Anyhow, so, uh, how did it go on a rimfire on a 22 long rifle? There were no issues in terms of accuracy in shooting. I worked out the turrets, it, um, everything tracked adequately well. As far as um, uh, Chinese-made scopes go, this is these are easily among the better turrets I've seen. I've seen a lot of them. These are very nice turrets. I mean, I can uh, they don't have zero stop, uh, no, these are just conventional turrets, but the feel is good, right? So if I want to, you know, mass around at longer range, like I often do with 22 long rifle, and just, I can take off the cap and uh, dial the turrets, and it, uh, they're repeatable, they have nice feel, uh, they have a little bit of hysteresis, but not that much, and I, you know, I spent so much time shooting old loophole scopes, I always dial in on the one direction when I adjust my sort of stuff. So it's uh, it's an easy scope for me to work with. Uh, side focus, but it does not have any hysteresis that I could find. The problem with 22 long rifle, so when I shoot firearms, I have a very specific set of um, shooting glasses that I, I, I use a few, but they generally, you know, those you know, wraparound glasses, I have them from Wiley X and a few others. And uh, uh, what happens is that those stick out from my face just a little bit more. And the way my face is, my eyes are not very deeply set. And uh, because of that, the goggles are also just a little bit further from the eye. I don't like it when my eyelashes touch the lens. It's not that it bothers me by itself, but they leave sort of residue that on the lens that irritates me. So if I set up my shooting glasses just right, the shooting glasses come into contact with the eyepiece of the scope because the eye relief is short. And then with every shot of 22 long rifle, there's no real recoil, but there is a little bit of the uh, um, uh, recoil impulse going through the rifle. So with every shot of 22, you get a little bump in your shooting glasses. I found that pretty irritating. Nevertheless, I went through what about 150 or 300 rounds in, in after test tracking and the, and the scope performed admirably, but uh, 
if you're buying this for your to, to use on a on a rim fire, uh, make sure that uh, you can set it up so it doesn't touch your glasses. Or maybe it won't bother you. It bothered me. Uh, but with no uh, no functional issues at all. I used the scope of a bit at high magnification there. I shot my little twenty two out to a couple hundred yards. I used the reticle. I verified that the reticle is properly calibrated. Um, it's a mil calibrated reticle. The scope is a second focal plate in design, and uh, the reticle is calibrated at 10x. And the power adjustment ring has a little detent at 10x, and the detent is actually uh, properly calibrated, right? So when I set the scope at 10x, uh, the reticle is accurate. What I did not like too much was that it's a mil based reticle, but the turrets are quarter MOA clicks. Um, but then again, the turrets are really in this kind of design. Not, you're not supposed to twist the turrets a whole lot, so I'm not sure I care, but it would have been nice to have, you know, 0.1 mil red clicks so that I can, uh, when I want to shoot a little further out and use a uh, reticle to call, to work out the uh, uh, shot correction uh, that I want to uh, dial, I'd be able to use it. As it is, I mostly just use the reticle. It has a little bit of a Christmas tree portion. I'll put it. I'll put that in the write up. Uh, and I was able to hold for elevation for wind uh, adequately well most of the time. So that's that. Uh, as far as uh, image quality goes, I still like the scope. Oh, um, in the original clip, I said it runs around three hundred dollars. I did a little, a little bit of searching. I don't think it's very widely available in the US, but uh, what it turned out to be, it's just under 300 pounds in Britain. And um, I saw a couple of, who was it? Um, Air Guns of Arizona, I think. I think it's somebody else. They were selling it in the US right around 400. Uh, it's still, I, think, I still think it's a good deal. It's sort of a unique scope, and I, I like the way it works. But uh, for the use of an actual firearm with a little bit of rearward uh, recoil, I would have liked it to have maybe half inch more eye relief, right? Instead of the an inch and a quarter that it has, if it had like an inch and a half and one point seven inches, something like that, I there's a fly. I'd be quite happy. No more fly. Uh, that's that. So uh, yeah, high magnification. Uh, like other scopes within this price range, this is you have to keep in mind, right? So I spent last few years. Uh, look at a lot of very fancy scopes so I have to this year most of the scopes I look at will be at the uh, underground will be some exceptions so I sort of have to reset my expectations a little bit and for 400 um, optical quality of the scope is very nice um, I don't really have anything per se to compare it to it's a 3 to 12 by 24 it's not the most common configuration in the world my typical Rifle scope that I use on my air guns is the SWFA SS uh, 3 to 15 by 42. That one is an optically a better scope, but it's a more expensive scope, I think, so around 600 bucks. And it has a 42 millimeter objective, this one has a 24. For scopes with small objective, unless you're talking about the $3,000 March or $2,000 Night Force, something like that, a lot of them gets a little bit milky high magnification, just a little bit of flare. Um, and uh, so does this one, uh, a little bit. It's not a very severe thing. Um, if you want to see more clearly, you can still dial it up. Uh, it works adequately well, but above 9x or so, there is a little bit of cloudiness in the image. And the cloudiness is uh, largely a flare, right? Um, the, way, the way this scope is, I don't know if you can easily see it in the video. So, uh, so the front portion of the tube is uh, largely uh, is largely uh, about an inch or so is uh, sunshade built in sunshade so let me see i don't want to put my dirty fingers in there okay but this much but an inch of it is sunshade uh, it probably wouldn't wouldn't have been a bad idea at all more i uh, made sort of a makeshift sunshade out of a rolled up a uh, uh, piece of paper a few, a few layers and it helped a little bit uh, and this slight cloudiness was at its worst in uh, two conditions, right? Very low light, or low light with some bright sources like street light, etc. So there is some uh, uh, some flare in the scope, but it's not too bad. Honestly, I thought it, you know, I was sort of pleasantly surprised. I thought it would be worse. In this price range, then, not that many you know, 
quality variable scopes that do not have it. Uh, actually, at 400 bucks. There are some hunting scopes, you know, that are 3 to 9 by 40 Japanese scopes that don't have it. Um, but just about everything else does to uh, varying degrees. And for a scope that's as feature rich as this, this is a nice optical system. I can't really compl complain. One interesting thing that happened is that because of that short eye relief, there's, um, the field of view is very wide. And uh, on my Air Force Terilon SS air gun, uh, the scope seats, uh, sits uh, fairly high above the, above the bore. So I did not see the barrel with it. It's also a fairly short gun. With my Ruger 1022 and with this gun, with the CZ Slavia, and 3x you can easily see the uh, you can easily see the uh, the muzzle in the front side. Uh, on the CZ, which is longer than my Ruger, so compared to a long gun, I can see the front sight, and it has actually a fairly tall uh, front sight. Just to show you, uh, I, I I can see the front sight up to about six x. That's how wide the field of view is. It's, you know, it's in the lower half of the field of view. I don't especially care, but now some people find it distracting. On this gun, if I really cared, I could remove the front sight, but I really don't want to. Um, that's basically it. But anyhow, so worked well on the rimfire. I liked optics. I'm pretty impressed with the mechanics. Uh, nothing broke, nothing broke on the Springer. This has the forward going uh, recoil impulse. That didn't face the scope in the slightest either. And uh, for shits and giggles, I decided to try a different scope mount. That's a BKL triple ring, sort of a single, uh, single piece mount. I wanted to see if it'll work, if it'll give me any trouble. So I popped it on the, on the Springer and set it up in my backyard and did another uh, tracking test and all that and wiggled and you know carried it around by the scope and uh, did all the usual uh, things that. Uh, when I'm not making a video, I don't tell scope manufacturers or mount manufacturers or gun manufacturers I do. And uh, neither the mount nor the scope were affected uh, by it in the slightest. I'm sure some paranoid people out there will uh, think less of me for using one comparatively narrow mount, but narrow, it just work fine. I like it. It's a nice, clean solution, easy to put on, easy to take off. Uh, and uh, the way it is, it allows me to set it up for profile relief. But anyhow, um, this mount uh, turned out to be a little bit higher than I would have liked. But it's not bad. It's not bad at all. And if push wants to shove, I can drop down and I can actually use iron sights with this thing. The mount has, let's see if you, I don't know if you can easily see it here, there's a little slot you can see through. It's not bad. It's, it's reasonably well integrated. Uh, it would probably work really better on a on some sort of an air gun that has an adjustable cheek piece, right? Then you can move it up for looking this, through the scope or move it down for using iron sights. But uh, we'll see. Anyhow, I'm probably going to give this rifle to my nephew anyway. Uh, if he wants an air gun, I'll give him this one. I don't use it all that much since I've got the tail and I have barely used the Springer, but maybe I'll get myself a, a more powerful. But I digress. What else can I say about the scope? So, um, the field of view. I keep on talking about the wide field of view, just to give it a little bit of a numerical perspective. The field of view at 3 power is right around 61 feet at 100 yards, I think. For comparison, the scope I normally use on my air guns, the second focal plane, as WFA SS 3 to 15 by 42. At 3x, that scope has about 35 foot field of view. And that's fairly normal for a reasonably decent variable power uh, Japanese scope. Is there some a little bit wider, some a little bit narrower? Uh, but uh, so 61 feet, this is 35. Uh, the field of view on this sucker is almost uh, twice wider. And that's a big deal, and all that. And that was one of the interesting things I found that in low light, uh, when I didn't have too much, uh, too many flare sources, it actually worked surprisingly well. Um, especially if I kept them, the magnification fairly moderate, that wide field of view uh, makes it a little bit easier 
to use in low light, even with a small objective. But uh, in all fairness, if this is for hunting in low light or for some sort of a low light use, uh, you should be looking for a scope with a large objective. As this one. this guy can do it in a pinch, but it's not designed for that, right? Uh, it's designed to be fairly slim and streamlined and compact, and it's a hunting plinking scope for air guns that need to pack reasonably small. At least that, 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 that's my take on it. Uh, the illuminated radical in low light worked very well. Uh, it has 11 settings, 11 brightness settings, and the first two or three are very dim. And in low light, you don't want the radical to be excessively bright. Uh, so the illuminated radical worked nicely. I do not know for sure how long the battery lasts, but uh, I sort of left it on exactly for a few days and did not, did not run out, so I'll go had not assumed that uh, the runtime is reasonably long. Uh, the brightest setting is not bright enough for full daylight. But when you're not in full bright sun, on setting 11, you can uh, you can see the illuminated radical uh, adequately well. What's illuminated is the little central crosshair. And uh, um, so anyhow, so that works well. What else? So I'm largely done with this guy. I don't think there's much else that I can test. Uh, if I find something else to compare it to, I will. Uh, the, the scope as it is, is good enough to make it uh, uh, to my list of recommendations. I haven't spent a whole lot of time with the Aragon scopes uh, in the past since uh, some of the centrifuge scopes I use are pretty good, have pretty good close focus, so I simply use that like the SWFA scope I keep on mentioning. I think I'll make a new recommendation for Aragon scopes and uh, put a few in there. Um, it's going to be Aragon slash Rimfire. For me personally, I cannot recommend the scope for Rimfire, not because it doesn't work well, but because I didn't like being bumped in my shooting glasses. For other people, it might work, but just check it out. But for Aragon use, I can comfortably recommend it. It's uh, Unique design, the short head relief is special, uh, the wide field of view has distinct advantages, it's a relaxing scope to look through, it has a very respectable image quality and mechanically it's been almost flawless, like I said, very slight hysteresis on elevation turret going up and going down was a little bit of an offset. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of scopes do that over the years. That does not, uh, that did not phase me uh, in the slightest. And uh, when I tried to look at distant targets, I could dial out parallax at uh, near infinity. I, the furthest I looked at was seven, eight hundred yards. Don't remember now. But for a scope, uh, I have a twelve power uh, with the objective this small, eight hundred yards is effectively an infinity setting. So they actually saying five hundred thousand and in infinity, but there is really very little difference in. Uh, if any, between infinity and a thousand. Um, a lot of, uh, quite a few Aragon scopes I've seen in the past are scopes that are uh, designed to focus uh, for very close focus. They don't, you cannot fully dial parallax out at infinity. With this guy, uh, I can and comfortably. Anyhow, um, that's it on the MTC Optics Viper Connect 3 to 12 by uh, 24. I hope my accent hasn't driven you nuts yet. And I am gonna do a little bit of a write-up on it at some point, but for now, this goes on the website, at least uh, I can get information out while I still uh, remember what was happening. I'm out.